Plastic waste is fast becoming a huge problem in the ocean. Our use of plastic and the way it's disposed of around the world is far from sustainable. In this module, we collected samples of plastic from a local nature reserve. We saw how long plastic takes to decompose in nature, and we found out how the plastic in the ocean directly affects marine animals. Our last investigation was of nurdles, the little pre-production plastic pellets, to see how those can form a major component of oceanic waste. Not all of the plastic that ends up on our beaches has actually come from Bermuda. A lot of it arrives from all over the world, brought here by the winds and the prevailing currents. There are two reasons all this plastic is such a problem. Firstly, it never actually biodegrades. It just continues to break down into smaller and smaller pieces. And this is a process called photodegradation. Secondly, many marine animals can mistake plastic for food. Seabirds and turtles are the worst affected and they eat so much of it that they end up with stomachs filled with nothing but plastic. With no room for normal food, they end up starving to death. In order to learn more about plastic waste and how it breaks down in the ocean, we did an activity where each student chose a piece of trash. We tried to arrange them along a timeline by determining the composition of our items and then deciding where they belong based on other items. I picked the fishing line because it is very strong plastic and it's meant to be in the water so it won't break down in the water and water is going to affect the water. In fact, we can have a look at this. I know that they've got two of them here. So this one so is a photodegradable one, six months, as opposed to this one. Plastic one, 400 years. After seeing the actual timeline of how long these objects take to degrade, we were all surprised. We learned plastic waste doesn't biodegrade, so it never actually gives away. This causes problems for organisms that get tangled or eat it. After working on our timeline activity, we went to Whale Bay in Cooper's Island, Bermuda's newest nature reserve, to see how badly the beaches there are affected by washed up plastic. It was amazing, kind of depressing, just how much plastic there was. Not just little pieces, but even huge items. One of the largest was a truck tire that took our whole team of bionauts to recover from the water and get it back to the dump. So this is all right off the beach right here? Yep. And where do you think it's all come from? Uh, bad people. Bad people. <laughs> do you think ships, or do you think any of it's come from land, or what's your guess? Uh, ships, I think, because lots of this is stuff like water bottles, but there's random stuff that looks like a piece of a bike or something, so I don't know how that got here. And that is like a piece of a wetsuit or something, so. Wow. Oh, well, good job cleaning it up. Yeah, All cool. plastic stuff. Yeah. yeah. Any bite marks, can you see? No. Turtle bites or anything? I don't think so. Something might have been nibbling there, huh? Yeah. Well, Baylor from a boat. Those are yeah. bite marks on me. Oh yeah, that could be well be something biting them. Yeah. Yes. What would be biting on them? Turtles. I'm not sure. Maybe turtles, yeah. fish. Parrot fish. Oh, oh well, guys, good job. So, what do we do with all of the plastic we found at Cooper's Island? Most of it went to the dump, but we kept a few things. The nurdles, which we'll talk about later, we kept and took into the lab. Any plastic with bite marks we took to Mr. Mark Outerbridge, who works as the program director of the Bermuda Turtle Project at the Bermuda Aquarium Museum and Zoo. So the green turtle is uh, the, the turtle that, that the res residents of Bermuda and boaters see when they're out on the seagrass flats. So these, these, uh, these animals are grazing on the turtle grass. Um, they're actually after the stuff that grows on the blades of grass. The dentition is serrated, which aids them in cropping. The, uh, the algae. They typically get to about 68, 70 kilos before they leave Bermuda. So we'll, we'll get them when they're um, about dinner plate size, and then they get significantly larger than that when they leave. But they, 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 they arrive here and leave here at very specific sizes. This, this, this was a piece of plastic that was floating in the ocean. Someone brought it in, and um, it had turtle bites all over it. So he was he was probably a very small green turtle. Yeah. Yeah. To have done that. You can see the little tiny That's right. lacerations. Yeah. yeah. More than sharp bits. That's right. So it's not, it's not limited just to turtles. They find albatrosses in the Pacific being 
uh, decimated because the parents are feeding young plastic. Oh. You know, they're, they're, they're hunting in the open ocean, they're finding these plastic bits. They go back to the beach, there's the baby, and then they're feeding the babies, and then scientists are finding, you know, dead babies in these nests, and, you know, there's like rotten remains, and right in the middle of a whole animal, big lump of garbage. And, and you know, that is what the parents have fed the animal until it died, and that's what's left when it kind of rots away. Okay, back to the nurdles that we mentioned earlier. Nurdles are small plastic resin pellets, and these are shipped all around the world in huge containers, and then once at the factories, they're melted down and blown into the molds to make whatever plastic shape is needed. And they use vacuum pumps to suck the nurdles out of the shipping containers into the factories, and then they're moved around the factories in the same method. A lot of the nurdles escape, and they end up in the uh, grounds around the factories. When it rains, a lot of the nurdles wash down through storm drains and out to sea. We've discovered that there are billions of nurdles floating out in the ocean. The problem, of course, is that they really resemble fish eggs and other small animals, and so they get eaten by the millions by turtles, seabirds, and fish. Once a turtle's stomach or a bird's stomach is full of the nurdles, there's no space left for its real food, and these birds, these marine animals, can die of starvation. That's not the only problem, however. Nurdles absorb all sorts of persistent organic pollutants from the ocean. These are man-made industrial chemicals that are used, or were once used, as agricultural pesticides. They resist environmental degradation, and so they accumulate in the environment. They also biomagnify in food chains. This means that they reach increasingly more toxic levels the further up the food chain you go. Some examples you may have heard of, DDT, PAHs, and TBT. So we took some of the nurdles we collected at Cooper's Island to Dr. Andrew Peters at BIOS to see what kind of pollutants they had absorbed and brought to the beaches of Bermuda. So here we are, these are the, the results now from the samples that you collected from those plastic pellets. Uh, as you remember we extracted them, ran them through the cleanup uh, process to, to isolate any, any chemicals of interest. What we've done is we, we injected a small amount of that onto the GC. The GC has separated all the components out from that mixture into these separate peaks. So hopefully each one of these is a separate organic compound. And we can look at what each peak is composed of in terms of its mass spectra. So the, f the fragments, the, the molecular fragments of each of those chemicals that it's separated out. And we can use those fragments, the, the spectra there, this pattern, of fragments to, as, as a fingerprint to help identify what those chemicals are. In conclusion, we realize that plastic waste in the ocean is a massive problem for many reasons. Plastic waste absorbs harmful chemicals from the air and ocean. Animals who consume the plastic by accident also consume the toxins and harmful chemicals that the plastic waste contains. We also know that if nothing is done about the trash island and the Sargasso Sea, the trash patches will grow more and kill more organisms. Since plastic never biodegrades, and we don't know how to get rid of it, we need to use as little as possible and prevent what we do use from ending up in the sea.